Welcome to the Omega Museum. We are here to talk about the history of the Seamaster and to understand the history of the Seamaster and why in 1948 Omega was actually even able to introduce a whole family of watches like the Seamaster, we need to look a bit further back. And uh, what I mean with this is I mean to look at our military history because in fact the Seamaster is something like a peaceful child of war. You may know that during the Second World War, Omega was uh, able to deliver professional military timepieces. And I stress to the Allied forces because we literally delivered only to the Allied forces. And uh, we talk about extreme numbers, we talk about more than 110,000 watches delivered to the Allied forces, to England, to the Ministry of Defense. At that time, it was called the Ministry of War, by the way. And we talk at first, by the end of the 1930s, beginning 1940s, we talk about watches like this. We call them professional because they have all the signs of professionalism written on them. Easy to read contrasted dials, um, a central seconds hand, and they were waterproof. And they were used mostly by Royal Air Force pilots or fleet air arm pilots, but also navigators, bombers, but also like personnel, like military personnel on the ground or on the ships, so not only airborne. The most important development that uh, we can trace with these watches, because I said before, this is a waterproof watch, whatever that means, in the 1930s and 1940s, it leads to a sort of a specification. In the mid-1940s, the Ministry of Defense comes up with a new definition, and this new definition has literally the waterproof as a title on it. It's uh, what collectors refer to as a triple W's, the WWW watches, which is not the internet, but this is literally wristwatch waterproof. And if you look at these watches, central seconds hand and small seconds hand, you see the basis of most 1940s professional or semi-professional watches that were ever commercialized. You see them already on these watches. Um, what is important is readability, luminosity, if ever, anti-magnetic characteristics, today you call them amagnetic, whatever that meant again in the 1940s. So all the ingredients that you have on the Seamaster, you find already in our military UK Allied Forces deliveries. What does that give you? It gives you the idea that a company during the war when other companies were forced to do bomb timers and all other, I would say, less glamorous things, Omega was able to produce watches freely. Nobody put a stop on this. What do you get when you deliver 110, actually more than 110,000 watches? You gain experience. The experience Omega gained in delivering these watches was crucial so that so soon after the war, Omega was able to deliver commercially a new family. <laughs>